how to highlight corresponding donut section when you hover over a legend in chart.js that's what we're going to talk about but this is part two of the video so if you've watched the previous video we already have most of it but the thing what i want to really focus on here is how can we refactor a lot of the code that we have and it can be done very very quickly so let me show you first of all we have here this is our fan, fantastic donut chart here which if you move over you get this nice beautiful effect here so it highlights it so this was basically from a question on this video here where Jafar Ali asked this specific question and then eventually in here we have part one of the video where you can watch this already so this is already in here however what I wanted to do was because I was not satisfied and I also in the video I already said we're going to fine-tune this as well so let's scroll down here you can see here we have all the codes here and this code here specifically is far too repetitive and this is forbidden in the dry principle and dry meaning do not repeat yourself so dry that should be dry so do not repeat your Cell. All right, so that's basically what we're going to do here. We want we don't want to repeat ourselves So you can see here what I'm doing is I'm repeating myself almost six times Well six times to be exact exact and we have this twice and then here again and this is honestly bad practice So let's start and fine-tune this to do this. We need to work with a for loop and if we have the for loop what we also need to do is we need to get this certain value because here we have all of these labels and we probably have to rename some of them and then we have also here all the data in here this is all great but we can fine-tune it far more better so what we're going to do is first of all let's create the for loop so we say for or what we can do first is we say here uh, let i equals zero and the reason why let is because we're going to loop through this so it's not a constant a constant will remain consistent the same value with the let that's not the case because we're going to add up it will incrementally increase by a value of one all right very important so here the triple statements i and i already indicated here above and i do this above on purposes because it's more efficient if you do it above instead of here below because basically you will loop through this code six times if you would have this down here if you would do this it will loop to three three characters or basically here four or five characters every time i don't want this of course if it's a, if it's a small loop doesn't matter but if you have a loop of 100 items it might speed up so this is a more better way to do it all right so once we have that then we are going to make the condition we will loop through as long as i is smaller I repeat it's smaller then uh, well let's look at the values we have here basically these items here six but how do we get this so here we should have a so number six must become eventually an array length so we need to get the length of the array did I spell it correct? Length. There you are. So we're going to do that one later on. And then what we have to do here is basically the incremental item is I++. All right. So within here, we can fine tune this. So we have this here, this constant here. And what we need to do is we need to loop this through. So basically what we can do here, we can just copy this. And we can copy one of these here below. We're going to get those two first. And what we can do here is this can be replaced. And this is very nice. You can replace this with a letter I. It's absolutely phenomenal. So the constant becomes an incremental constant because it will or it will sorry, it will recognize that label I equals label one. And then here, of course, this will be label I, but not like this. So the reason why we don't do this is because this is a query selector, and this is a string. We're looking for the class. Is the string, but specifically plus, you can do here maybe plus, i. i is one, so it would be class one, a label one, and then after we'll loop through it, etc. etc. So once we have this, we can now we can do this one. Then the next one we can do here is the following. What we can do first is let's validate if what we did was correct. So we say console.talk, and all I want to do now is I want to echo out label i. So, or I could return in the console log this. So if I do this, you will see something will happen here. 
the refresh, open up developer tab, and we should have here, as you can see, label I, one, two, three, four, five. And it says, it shows here, the first one is null. Why is it null? Well, remember how an array works. And our array works on zero base counting. It's very important. So what does this mean? So the index, so in the first element, all right, so let me give you these terms because these terms can confuse you. So the first element in an array is zero or index zero. So basically you will see it like this because it's zero base counting. That's the first element and which makes sense because you cannot say uh, the zeroth element. That doesn't make sense. That's not proper English, I guess. So you have to say here first element, but the first element referring to index zero. So right now we have here, we start with label one here in our items, as you can see here above as well. We have here, you can see here circle one, but we also have label one. So that is not what we need. So we need to, to make it easy, I'll just put a new number in here. And then we say here, one, two, three. So we just renumber them according to the matching values here. So that's the first one. And eventually we have to do with the circle as well, but let's wait for that first. So if I refresh here, let's see here, uh, nothing yet. Of course, we didn't connect anything yet. So the first thing that we want to do now is, or the next thing, we have to do this one here. So we're going to say here the label i for the, for the incremental, and then say inner text equals my chart dot data dot labels. All right, so I've explained this. We can do this better, by the way, and I'm going to show you later on how we can do this because this is off, uh, officially not the way how you work with the data, especially if you get in chart.js because your data usually come from a database. That would mean that you need to get it from somewhere else that will put it in there and then it will distribute at the right location. So, then, so we have to work with that later on. All right, so we have this. So if we do this, we should have now the exact same matching values here. Because this one's already labeled by default. Since, since this is an array, it's already zero. It's just only the label here. These label classes needed to be a matching number of zero here, and then one, two, three, four, five. That's what we did, same here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it matches everything here. So if we save this now, we should see exactly the same results. There you are. So we have this, that means that we can now delete this chunk of code. There you are, that's refactoring in a very, very efficient manner. Next one, what we can do is we're going to remove this item here. Let's fix this one as well. So here, same principle. We can basically copy almost this, but I'll just type it in. So we say constant, and this constant will be circle i equal document dot query selector and then here we do again exactly the same we say search for the class and the class name is circle and then class what's the number that we want i remember here single quotation here only and the dot here pay attention to the dot here don't forget that so once you did that we got this and then what we have to do here is then we say circle i dot inner text uh, oh, sorry, is it, no, that's not inner text, sorry, we're going to get the background color. So we say then style dot background color or background equals, and then we have here the items in here. So we say here, my chart dot data dot data sets, and here zero. Why zero here? Because this is still always the index number here. In the data sets we don't have an extra data set we only have one data set and that data set is data set zero very important to remember all right so we have this here and then we have here the border color and then the border color will be i there you are so now once we've done this let's comment this out save this refresh and we can see here can i open can i read properly style of null what happened here well Probably you are very aware that we numbered all of these correctly here, but we didn't renumber them here for the circle. Am I correct? Yes, there you are. That's why I couldn't find it because there was no value in there. So then we have this and then we have that. And finally, number five, matching this 
there you are. So now we've got everything. And if you hover over it, it doesn't break our design and our JavaScript here. Beautiful. So we're, we're very close now to this. Let's delete all of this. And then what I want to do is I want to only show you the final item here. That might be sometimes the case. So what happens here? So sometimes, and or most commonly, these values here are usually not shown like this. What you have is basically a constant here. And let's say this constant will be called chart labels equal. Then we get these values here. And usually you work from this data here, and then you can put in here chart labels. So we say here chart labels as a variable now, because it re realized that this is an array by default. So if I save this now and refresh, you see nothing really changes, but the structure within the JavaScript changes. And now we have this here. Basically here we can count the array. We could do it directly from this, but it's probably not common. You will, you will work with this and then with this data, just imagine this is JSON data. And this JSON data, you will parse the data to make it ja JavaScript uh, readable, basically. So it's ready for JavaScript. Uh, so the JavaScript can read the data and then you put it in here. That's how it works. That's how it works with your database as well. Same story. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to remove all of this extras here, remove that one. And then what I'm going to do here is remove the hard coded value here. All right. So what is the hard coded value here? Well, basically it's this item here, this constant here, chart labels. And then we can say here dot length. Why dot length? Dot length is an array value that calculates what is the length of the chart label. So if I save this now and I refresh, there you are. So now we have like this, and that looks quite nice. So with this, we can even adjust this. If we adjust this eventually here, we need to loop this through as well. However, I wanted to at least solve this chunk of code that we have here down, and that looks now really, really nice. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.